There is a deliberate dumbing down of the American society, culture, and art because the plan is to remove America as a superpower by 2030. And to do that, you need to create potato head dolls, people of interchangeable parts that need to be, well, godless, sexless, genderless, and of course, clueless. Human cattle, human weeds. The plan is to make you Citizen X, no nationality whatsoever, world citizens. Generation X, like they were, disaffected and directionless. Gender X, neither male nor female. Parent one, parent two, remember, the frontal birthing persons and period peoples with vaginas, clueless of the hard sciences, history, and critical thinking skills. Here's another clip that demonstrates what's known as the pincer tactic. What is the pincer tactic? I'm glad you asked. But before we get into that, stay up to date with everything iconic by following us on all of our social media. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like our videos. To support us, you can go to patreon.com slash the iconic podcast and make a monthly pledge. You can also support us by going to the iconic label.com and purchasing some of our merchandise. So let's get back to it. What is a pincer tactic? Well, the pincer tactic is where you use politicians and protesters to squeeze the majority into thinking that they're actually the minority. Then you can push on the majority and get them into agreeing to things that you know that they don't really want, but they end up going with the flow because they were made to think that they are the outsider. This pincer tactic or pressure from above and pressure from below is what Jan Kozak in his book and not a shot fired describes when he talks about the people of Czechoslovakia being manipulated into voting themselves into slavery. Through targeted mass agitation, a free government was transformed into a totalitarian dictatorship legally. Today, we're hearing a lot about this nonsense being pushed at the very top as though it were legitimately valid conversation and discourse. Here's the birthing person's nonsense montage. To ensure that every birthing person across this nation is empowered and feels safe. To support birthing people. All pregnant and birthing people. Black birthing people is attainable. Black birthing people. Black women and birthing people. Black and indigenous birthing people. For birthing people of color. And birthing people. Among black birthing people. Black birthing people. And birthing people. For birthing people. Black birthing people. And our black birthing persons. For all birthing persons in Louisiana. That birthing people want. Support for birthing people. Leaving black birthing people. Protect black birthing people and to save lives. Yeah, and here's the pronoun nonsense being pushed from above. Uh, good afternoon. I want to welcome these leaders for coming in to have this very important discussion um, about some of the most pressing issues of our time. Um, I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman sitting at the table wearing a blue suit. Yes, thank you, Madam Vice President. My, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a white woman with long brown hair. I'm wearing red, um, a red dress, and I'm wearing a see-through mask so you can see my red lips. I am a black woman with curly hair, and I am wearing a vintage black and floral dress. Pronouns in the workplace. Do you know what your coworker prefers? Well, joining me today is Heather Talamante, founder of Tell Us About Yourself, Inc. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Of course. Good to have you back. So yeah. first off, let's talk about DEI in the workplace, and that's better known as diversity, equity, and inclusion. How do we go about the discussion of pronouns? So essentially, the employee will reach out and say, hey, this is my preferred pronoun. This is how I would like to be addressed in the workplace how we go about it is by respecting their request right so you want to make sure when they say this is what i would like to be referred to um we address it and we we honor that and we uh moving forward use that term whether it's he she they them their mm -hmm. whatever they would like to use we want to make sure we honor that request and make them feel comfortable in the workplace hi my name is johnny and i use he him pronouns hi and i'm kanji and i use she her pronouns and we're here to talk about Pronouns. What is a pronoun? A pronoun is how we identify ourselves apart from our name, and it's also how people refer to us in conversations. Using the right pronouns is a really simple way to affirm someone's identity. It is a signal of acceptance and respect. If it's a signal of acceptance and respect, how do we go about creating a safe space for everybody? Hmm. Here's the pronoun nonsense being pushed from below. 
Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. Brian Laverne, he, him. Hi, I am Andy P. Uh, from Los Angeles, they, them pronouns. Uh, thank you, Chair. Nick, he, him, his from Twin Cities. James Jackson, Sacramento, DSA, he, him. Hi, my name is On Lin Wang. I use he, him. This is uh, Chris, he, him from Cleveland. This is Daniel Ray from Piedmont, um, he, him pronouns. My name is Trey. Uh, I use they, them, and he, him pronouns. Hi, I'm Nadine, a sex educator. And I'm Eva, a sex researcher. I use the pronouns she and her because I'm a woman, and when I was your age, I used to be a girl. Gender is how you feel on the inside about whether you're a boy or a girl, a man or a woman. If you're non-binary, feel like neither or both. People can also be fluid, feel more like female, more like male, on a, based on a different day or time. It's really individual. Absolutely. Everyone born with a vulva is a girl. True or false? Or identifies as a girl. Well, not everybody is sure, and that makes sense. But our genitals actually don't determine our gender. So some people born with vulvas can be boys. So, first and foremost, what are my pronouns? They, them. So they all know my pronouns. It's they, them. It's quite simple. And then um, the next question was, do y'all respect those pronouns? And here's what the end result looks like and sounds like for the United Nations when they say that they're... Well, they're going to steal a generation of students. This is what it's like in the real world when the destabilization that Bezmenov talks about is complete. The gender identity is really taking over our schools. If you speak against what they're doing to our children in terms of gender identity, especially with like trans and non-binary, and if you don't address them in their correct pronoun, which is they, them, you are a bigot. You are homophobic and you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Now these kids, they are even younger now and they're taking advantage of that. And then they're also putting teachers in a position where if we don't acknowledge their chosen gender, we're now considered hateful bigots. And you could lose your job if you don't use the correct pronoun with students. In my district, there was a teacher that called home and used the new pronoun that was being used at the school and name of the child because they changed their gender and their pronoun called home, the parents didn't recognize who the child was because the child did not tell the parents wow. that they had changed their... And so because of that, the parent was upset. So because of that, the district told the teachers to hide the pronouns and the gender change from the parents. What are your preferred pronouns? Uh, they, them. These are not my preferred pronouns. These are my pronouns. Mapa, Nini, Nopa, Nori, Opa, Pere, Pom Pom, Saza, Zizi, Trixic, Toric, Feminomoric, Viramoric, Allosexual. They, them, theirs. They're customizable. Anything can be a pronoun, really. Neurodivergent. Noun self pronouns. Animal. Noun self pronoun. Okay, asexual, demisexual, and cupiosexual. Autosexual. Ace flux. Asexuality and allosexuals. Neuroqueer. Gray sexuality. Ah. And demisexual. Jexera is a gender identity that's similar to being a girl. Let's talk about cupiosexuals and cupio romantics. Let's talk about libidoist and non libidoist asexual. Pan gender. Non asexual aromantic and allosexual aromantic micro labels people with penises or people with vaginas rather than saying male and female or men and women alrighty everybody repeat after me asexual pansexual bisexual trans people and non-binary people are 100% valid and definitely part of the LGBTQ community and if you don't like that stuff my and according to Michael Shaw from freedomadvocates.org and Bezmanoff once you've stolen a generation of children well what are you actually doing with them you're indoctrinating them via the administrator-induced programs of critical race theory nonsense, social justice nonsense, gender ideology nonsense, and climate change nonsense, all a part of the new sustainable education programs covered under Agenda 21, New World Order, One World Government, Global Governance Implementation Plan.